NBA 2K23 is out and is a huge package focused on celebrating the history of basketball. The main focus of that celebration is 23 himself, with Michael Jordan being a major part of the game's marketing and modes. The on-the-court action is the best it's ever been. The live service side is somehow even more predatory feeling, but is that enough to hold it back? Well, no, I don't think it is, so let's get into why in the Xbox Era Review of NBA 2K23 for the Xbox Series X and S. As this is a yearly sports title release, let's get right into the nitty gritty. The main menu greets you with a few differently sized boxes to emphasize where developer visual concepts want you to go first. The big one is the return of the Jordan Challenge. This is a series of games throughout Michael Jordan's career with various goals within them. They're fun, feature some fantastic filters and UI changes to make them feel era appropriate, and I see myself playing through them all. Next up are the two live service and microtransaction heavy modes. First is My Player, where you'll make your own version of the player known as MP. I use the face scan app on my phone and get a big cheek monstrosity that was perfectly ridiculous looking. The writing and overall storyline are mediocre, but the setup for everything works well on the new generation of consoles. The city returns and it is a large player and NPC filled playground of basketball. The mode like always pushes hard into the more predatory style pay to win microtransactions. But if you like the mode, you know what you're getting into already. My team is the card pack team builder that takes a surprisingly long amount of time to actually let you access the card building part of it. There is a series of 10 games that I had to beat before the main mode opened up, and I saw no way around it. Once you're in, it's another very well made, but heavily favoring pay to win mechanics live service mode that doesn't seem too different from previous iterations. These live service modes are the main focus of the various editions of the game as well. We were given the deluxe edition code, which gave me many bonuses in both my player as well as a large assortment of cards and points in the my team mode. The game is extremely aggressive in pushing the modes, and if you click on them to see what they are the first time, you are welcomed with a long and unskippable video. It is what it is at this point, but it can feel kind of bad to see it pushed so hard when the actual on the court play and the other modes are so good. The moment to moment gameplay and modes on offer in NBA 2K23 are great. The more in depth inclusion of the WNBA is really good to see as well. You get full seasons, playoffs, and online play for both the men's and women's leagues, and for the NBA, there is an enormous assortment of all time teams available. I got a real sense of the love for the sport from developers on this side of things. It almost feels like the live service mode is the prerequisite for them to be able to pay for everything else. There are a lot of settings available for the on the court action, but I kept things on default to start and it felt really well balanced. There was a challenge to be had, but once I got a hang of the momentum of the players, I was hooked. The ball feels real in your hands. And using the classic 2K camera and seeing when a shot is going to be a bit short and how it bounces off the rim, it just, it felt right. Timing a steal didn't feel automated based on an invisible quick time event. And it has never felt more like a true game of basketball to me than this year. I have loved this series since its inception on the Dreamcast, but at its heart, it was very much an arcade basketball game in which you could learn what did and didn't work and easily exploit it. This is the first entry where it really feels that even at the default difficulty, my knowledge of the sport was necessary to get the most out of things, and I love it. This is helped in large part by a mixture of improved player AI and improved animations. Neither is quite perfect yet, and it never will be, but the computer feels like it's working to earn points and stops instead of just, you know, cheating in the background to ensure a close game. The animations, while not great all the time, make things easier to read in the heat of the action, though they still tend to start and stop too quickly at times, making things look like the video game they are. The faces though, oh boy, they look incredible. Playing on a Series X, this is one of the best looking games of all time, and it's whopping 161 gigabyte install means it freaking better be. It is shocking just how good looking 
and large this game is. And it won't run on an external hard drive, so make sure you have the space available before buying and installing it. And that does bring us to another issue, and that is the price. The base game is up to 70 bucks on the Series and PS5 consoles. There are microtransaction bonus heavy versions for 80 bucks, which is the one we got, 100, and even a $150 championship edition that nets you NBA League Pass. So that last option is kind of a steal if you were already buying League Pass, as it turns the $100 version of the game into an extra 20 bucks on top of things. As this is a review of the game at launch, these various versions will drop at price throughout the season, so it won't matter much. But for now, it is a big ask for most consumers during our recent economic struggles. Still, the package on offer is gigantic between the WNBA, NBA, and classic modes and teams available. Bugwise, the game has kind of been flawless for me so far. The only issue I've had were server-related while skateboarding around the city. The menu itself feels more detached from the online servers than EA Sports' recent offerings, and while the UI itself isn't always the easiest to navigate, it is good enough for what it needs to be. One feature I sunk a lot of time into is the create a sneaker mode. And I'm not a sneakerhead. I own one pair of work boots, one pair of shoes, and one pair of sneakers. But I ended up spending hours going through and crafting multiple pairs of sneakers before realizing how long I had spent in there. It's just oddly satisfying. And another area I have to commend is the play-by-play, because -play, there is a lot of it for each mode, and it is a commendable effort given just how many modes there are. In conclusion, 70 bucks is a big ask at launch, but this is a very big game. The gameplay is the best it's ever been, and the live service, while the most predatory feeling it's ever been, is offset by all the other content that's on offer. It's stunning to look at, thanks in large part to its jaw-droppingly large install size. It features a ton of classic teams and far better WNBA integration. If you haven't played an NBA 2K game in a while, this might finally be the year for you to jump back in. As always, thank you so much for watching, and if you can like, comment, and subscribe, it is by far the best way to help our channel grow. And we will see you here next time on Xbox Era.